Hi, welcome to Monterey's Cooking. I'm John Pisto. Today we're going to do something really, really, really different. I was in the mood for some gumbo. Now, that's not really Italian, but we're going to make it Italian. But to make gumbo, you have to have somebody from Louisiana. So, here's my friend, Miles Williams. Come on, Miles. Hey, How are John. you? Nice to see How you, bro. You doing? How are you? Good to see you. Hey. Now, you can't make gumbo without somebody from Louisiana, so here we are. <laughs> well, I brought something for you today. I caught this off the Mardi Gras parade last Ooh, year. This right. is just to add a little gris gris to the gumbo. <laughs> so that's right. for you, some Mardi right. Gras beans. Well, I'm in the mood now. All right. <laughs> well, Miles uh, happens to be a good friend, and you can see we eat together a lot. <laughs> He's ruining uh, my diet, you know, I he, tell you that. He knows how to hold a fork. <laughs> um, but he also owns a beautiful resort down in Big Sur called the Post Ranch, and also was a singer with the New Christie Minstrels at one, po at one point. Gotta and be a certain age to remember that. Yeah, that goes back nowadays. Uh, uh, maybe even while we're cooking here, maybe he might just break out into song. <laughs> 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 well, and I promise not to sing, but, uh, but let's, we're gonna make gumbo, and I'm gonna make old-fashioned gumbo, Miles. You know, this is the old-fashioned, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm using lard, none of this short, no shortcuts. Um, no maybe, whole hog. I mean, this is gonna be the real stuff. Miles is in charge of the vegetables. Let's okay. get going, let's start, start doing this. All right. And um, what I've done is uh, we're gonna use the stock. Now, you know, in Louisiana, they use those blue crabs. Now, you know blue crabs are yep. this big. We're gonna use Dungeness crab. Oh, I man. mean, this is our crab. He loves. <laughs> so we'll just make a little stock. And the one thing that you have to have is the roux. Now, I'm using lard, folks. I know, but it's it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna make extra because you know what? It, sometimes I like to use it in other dishes, and it'll stay forever. Now, let me explain to you what roux is. Roux is a mixture of oil and flour. And what we want to do with our roux, and this takes a while to do it, and you got to keep your eye on it, is that it'll, um, uh, it'll burn on you. So you got to always keep your eye on this. Very, very important. Okay, so very while I'm... Is it? Yes. Very traditional. I mean, how can you mix, you know, especially that kind of cooking, you got to have that kind of, uh, that flavor. That you, okay, see the... This is a fresh cooked crab. I'm putting everything in there. There's all the butter. And I'm gonna, and I mean everything, folks. I'm gonna just break that guy up. Usually I get a, a six by six, and I use a six by six and just smash, smash this thing to smithereens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it works good that way. New Orleans got a lot of tradition. You know, every Monday, uh -huh. every restaurant in New Orleans and every school serves red beans and rice. Oh, boy. Because it's wash day. And that's, and that's good good red beans oh, and rice. Oh, the greatest. <coughs> it's really good flavors. What I'm going to do is move this oil over. And what I'm going to, I'm going to start the roux. Now, it's equal amounts of fat to flour. You know, you were talking about those blue crabs a while yeah. ago. In New Orleans, uh, when we go out to by the lake, we eat blue crabs. They bring them a whole tray of blue crabs. You eat oh a dozen boy. crabs when you sit down. They're sweet, too. I like that crab meat. I really do. That's, it's got a great flavor. Mario, can I get some more flour for you from you, please? Thanks. But these crabs, I've made gumbo with these crabs. It makes great gumbo. It does. It does. Now, you know, I've, always, I've done it with shrimp shells, too, or lobster shells. And what you got to do is really smash them up, you know. Let everything, it's a shame I'm, I'm not going to take the meat out. Let me see if it's any good. That's good. So we just smash it. Throw it in there like that. But, mm -mm, beans and rice, oysters. Geez, I, when I think of the New Orleans, that's what I... Comes to mind, Dixie beer. Absolutely, Dixie I mean, beer. God, that always, stuff is, uh, always rice on the table. Always rice on the table. And the great French bread. Mm. It, you know, it starts off big puffy French bread, but you can smash it down. It's got a, it makes a nice thin kind of a sandwich. Mm -hmm. We need a po' boy sandwich down there. Mm -hmm. You ever had a muffalata sandwich? Oh, well, we did it on the show. 
We've done mofalada sandwiches. Oh. Damn. Good. good. And and that's nice Italian. Olive. That's that some is. of the Italian influence in New Orleans. That's right. It is. A lot of Italian. I found just loaded with. I remember eating all this crab, folks. <laughs> Watch it. <there. laughs> ah, darn it. But it's so good. I cooked these up fresh here, Miles. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Mm. Oh, that's it's the stuff. Isn't that Ooh. delicious? So this is going to make a heck of a stock. And I'm just going to put a little onion in it. Get that going. You know the thing about gumbo, it's kind of a, it's kind of a catch-all, kind of like pizza. I mean, you can almost make gumbo mm. out of whatever you have. Yep. Turkey makes a great gumbo. Mm -hmm. We've done, uh, geez, uh, smoked duck even. Came oh, out yeah. delicious. I mean, it was absolutely delicious. So I'm just going to put some uh, some water in here. It's a great thing to do with your leftover Thanksgiving turkey. Wow, good idea. Make this make a stock with the bones, huh? Yeah. Good idea. Instead of a turkey soup. Right. That'll work. Oh. Okay. So we got this going. All right, and I need some tomato in there. And we're gonna make this have a lot of flavor. And you know, I like to put uh, I like to put even some saffron in here. Saffron? Yeah. You ever now hear that? Wait, now wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> huh? No? I put it, no, I put a little bit, just a little bit. Saffron goes good. I bet y'all find one recipe over there that has saffron in it. Okay, just a little pinch of saffron. Now that's just, I mean, you won't even taste it. It'll just add to the complexity of that. Okay, what, we, let's put some of these vegetables in here. We can start sauteing these off. All right. And, um, and that's hot oil. And I'll chop some onions up. Yep. So what do you, what so you restaurant do you like to eat in over there, Miles? My favorite restaurant is probably Mandich's. Really? Mandich's Restaurant. It's way off the beaten track, way down on uh, St. Claude Street, New uh -huh. Orleans. Uh -huh. Or Yuglich's. Now those are two uh, kind of, I, th I think they're Yugoslavian names. Yeah. And um, Yuglich has a little dive in a part of New Orleans where you don't go to Yuglich's except in the daytime. <laughs> you don't get out of your car at night. Is that in, right? Around there. But uh, he's the guy that took Cajun food to Russia, if you remember, a few years ago. Yes, when was I do. How and, interesting. Uh, and he took all kinds of uh, foods, you know. Took uh, jambalaya, crawfish pie, the filet gumbo. Ooh, yeah. You know that stuff? I, I know that one. Yes, sir. He took that, huh? He took I'll everything. Darn. For today, I'm cooking with good old John Pisto. Yeah. I feel it. Yes, sir. Get on down. Well, geez, maybe we need a beer or something, huh? <laughs> no, we don't. I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, this feels authentic. How are we doing on the flour? Haven't found it yet, huh? Okay. Well, it's okay. Well, we can do without it. Well, it's going good here, looking good. Now, we're going to use Pacific oysters instead of the uh, the uh, oysters, Gulf oysters. You know, they, they understand they got to be real careful now with Gulf oysters. They're that, um, making sure they're coming from certified waters. Really? And stuff, yeah. But, you know, we get them in the restaurant now. All They're tagged and dated, so they're very, very safe. Certified is what they are now. Now, this is andouille sausage. Andouille sausage. Okay, All this right. is uh, one made in California. Oh, here comes the flying flower. Okay. That's better. Won't you come along with me down the Mississippi? <laughs> we'll take a trip to the land of dreams. Down the Mississippi, down to New Orleans. I told you he was a singer. I'm telling you. I, hear I can't cook this food without Jesus, singing. I'm starting to get an accent all of a sudden, too. <laughs> uh, 
Old I friends know. to greet us, new friends to meet us, <laughs> where the dark and the light folks meet. Down the Mississippi, down to Basin Street. No, I like it. Yeah, bro. Yes, sir. Okay. So I put equal amounts of uh, the celery and the onions and the bells. And uh, we're going to put a good amount of sausage in here. Now, when you're doing this, you know, you always have to keep my my eye on these guys, this thing here. Because once that burns, it gets bitter, you know. Yep. Now the ruse the secret. Ruse the secret, and and I found that you you uh, you know this will start going to different colors. They'll go blonde, then they'll go tan, and then it'll, you know I like mine to be about a mahogany color, and that's when the 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 flavor of the flour will come out. The nuttiness will come out. Of it. Yeah. Just, I mean it adds to it. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, John, Miles. you ready for this? Put her in, baby. All right. So it's equals amount of uh, all right. celery, celery, green onion, bell pepper. Yeah, and I put the white onion, too. Uh, so <coughs> get a spoon right behind you. Let's start stirring that up. We want that to cook down real good. Yeah, I do believe I, I am getting that accent. Yep. Can you say show enough? Show enough. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Can you say y'all come? Y'all come. I'm getting good. A lot of pepper. Okay, we'll put the heat on there real good. And I'm going to put some hot pepper in here. We're going to put some. Yeah, oh, let's yeah. crank that up so that it'll move right along. That's the stuff. And, uh, geez, I don't know. What's your favorite gumbo? Crawfish gumbo is delicious. Too. Crawfish is excellent. Oh, God, the butter. I like, um, actually, I like turkey oyster. That's my really? my favorite. Ooh. Well, we'll put nice big chunks of sausage in there so that they'll, they'll cook into it. Now, you see how this is starting to turn? Mm-hmm. There you go. Now, you, when you serve this, you want to be careful not to serve too much rice. People tend to serve, you know. They, yeah, they load it up. They load up with too much rice and... Uh, you don't want to do that. Geez, too bad George Rodriguez's not here, huh? Oh, the Blue Dog Man. Oh, gone. You've got another friend from uh, New Orleans. Uh, he also has a shop here in Carmel called the Gallery Blue Dog. Yes. And boy, he's a real... Here, he, here is stuff right here, there. Yeah, he's a raging Cajun. <coughs> he's a real Cajun, yeah, George is. Yeah. I understand he opened a restaurant now. No. Yeah, he's opening a restaurant down in uh, Lafayette. I hope he's not cooking. I hope no. <laughs> <laughs> he can paint. He can paint, but uh... <laughs> I'll put a little bit more of that. Boy, this is looking good. Yeah, George has done real well with that. He's all over the world with the blue dog. That's and... famous, yep. Yeah. Mm -mm. I like K. Paul's. You ever been to K. Paul's oh, restaurant? Oh, that's definitely one of my favorite restaurants. Paul Prudhomme. I think he does Paul, it uh, Paul put the Cajun food on the map. I uh, think. He's the one that started with the blackened, blackened red, fish. The, red fish. The yeah. red fish got so popular, you know, they fished them out that's right. of the south, and they had to put a moratorium on it, and they couldn't get red fish uh, for a while. I'll and tell right. you a funny story about uh, Paul as he opened his restaurant, and he... <laughs> He, he didn't have a liquor license, so he, but he wanted to serve a, a drink in there, wanted to serve a martini, so he just took gin and uh, vodka, put them in a jar, a fruit jar, and put a piece of okra in there with it and he called it a smoke. salad. Holy smokes. <laughs> that's fantastic. And, it, and that, that's New Orleans for you. <laughs> it worked just fine. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's quite a chef. He really is a real tremendous chef. He was at the Commander's Palace, I understand for years, but his food has so much flavor to oh. it. I mean, the flavors just, and you know, he's using lard and he's using, uh, I mean, and this kind of food, you have to have it. You and know, the, a lot the, of garlics and oh, bold yeah. flavors. The uh, waiters in his place watch you and see if you finish your meal. If you eat everything on your plate, they put a gold star on your head. Oh, no kidding. And if you don't, <laughs> they put a blue star on your head. Jesus. 
And so you see people all walking all around the French Quarter with stars on their ah. face, and you can say, oh, you, you didn't finish your dessert, <laughs> did you? <laughs> Uh, he's terrific. Yeah, he is. He's got a great sense of humor. Yeah. Okay. See how this, uh, how the roux is starting to change color. Oh, that's See, that's happening. That's See that? Beautiful. And that's fast. Now, you, usually you do them in a cast iron skillet. You do it real slow. This is usually supposed to take hours, but if you do it and stay right on top of it and watch it, and uh, you can do it, you can turn out a real dark roux real quick. Yeah. However, be real careful. This is so hot. You know, this is, I mean, you get some of this oil on you yeah. and flour, it'll burn right through you. Yeah, so you've got to be right. real careful, especially when you're stirring. And you don't want to put any water in there because if that splashes over, it'll, it'll explode on you. Okay, this is going great. That's this probably is, the great thing about cooking Louisiana food. It's dangerous. <laughs> and it's not, I, I think the, the heat that they put into it makes it so exciting. You know, I've been appreciating hot things. You know, I think America is in love with hot things now. All of a sudden, everything's spicy, and you know, Southwest being so popular, people like spice. Um, and I found myself even liking it. It makes you feel good after you eat something hot. I deal with you the know? elderly, health care for the elderly. That's part of my my uh -huh. life. That's what I like to do. And and I found uh, read some reports about this. The taste buds as you grow older tend to kind of. They, they kind of give out a little bit. They're not quite as uh, sensitive as they were. Mm -hmm. And so older people, they've always shy, thought older people should shy away from hot, spicy foods. Now they find they're really, it's good for them. It's good for their digestion. It's good for their... I'll be done. Yeah, and they can taste the food. You know? So don't, uh, don't cut grandma's cayenne too much. Yeah. Well, you see, this is coming along really good. So this takes the mystery out of making gumbo. If you ever, you know, if you had, you know, we don't, I don't see too much gumbo around here. Um, but we'll keep on stirring. We'll be no, that's back. looking great. That's too. looking good now. Yep. The there. older your stock is, the now better it is. Okay. So you stock, okay, that's too nice and stirred. Okay, now what I'm going to do is. Oh, you're just going to be a little touchy here. Okay, now you get the stock. This be very careful when you do this. Okay. Oh yeah. See, I could, and I would even save this and do it, boil it one more time because I had all that meat left in it, you know, Miles? Yep. I would even use this another time. Okay, that goes right into the sink. You can make jambalaya with that. Oh, yeah. <coughs> okay, now let's bring it up to a boil. That's looking good. That's looking real good. Ooh. Okay, now here's our, here's our, see how I'm talking mahogany? That's mahogany. <coughs> Okay, this, now I want to add oysters. Mmm, oysters sure smell good, don't they? Oh, smells. They do to me. I just, don't know if they do to everyone, yeah, just but like to me. Just like the ocean. That's, okay, juice and all. You got to make sure you put the juice in. Don't drain off the juice. Okay. Got three jars. Okay. That's looking good. Now we're going to start put a little roux in there and just let that easy, easy. Okay. You see how that's thickening up a little bit? Yep. Yep. I got the heat on? Yep. I got the heat on. Okay. Now you have to add this. You know, I, it wouldn't be jambalaya with, or it wouldn't be gumbo without the roux. See, it's got that nice color to it. Oh, Boy, now. That sauce is going to be good. It's thickening up nice. Mm, mm, mm. Beautiful. Boy, we need is a couple of beers. Oh. A guitar, a little hound dog at our feet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'd be there. <laughs> 
we're not gonna we're not gonna do the rice but I like green onions on sprinkled on top of it and you're gonna sh show everyone how to do the fillet now yep. fillet is sassafras root that's right that's the stuff you make root beer out of and that's used as a thickener you notice we don't have any uh, we didn't put any okra in here okra is very good in there that's we don't use okra out here very much, but Not this this will it. thicken it and do a flavor that's very similar. Okay, and this is a on. traditional thing. And generally, you serve the uh, gumbo over rice, and then you sprinkle the fillet over it. Ooh, there's an oyster. Oh, so boy. Sprinkle a little bit of this. This is not hot. It just has a different kind of flavor, sassafras leaves. I'll have a little. Okay, folks, and here's some green onion. Somebody says this doesn't have any flavor. Shame on you, because this has got all kinds of flavor. Okay. Are we going to taste it? I think so. Don't burn our lips off. Do you know what it means <laughs> to miss New Orleans? <laughs> yes, sir. Mighty good, John. Not bad for a California Mighty boy. Mighty good. <laughs> <laughs>